Hello and welcome to Team Hypercube's Quick Play, the series where we run you quickly through the rules so that you spend less time reading and more time playing the game. Today we are playing Spank by Steve Jackson Games. As you might guess from the title, Spank, or Space Pirate Amazon Ninja Cat Girls, is a very serious, down-to-earth sort of game. The type of game that you might play on a cold winter's evening while sitting by the fire and sipping brandy with your loved ones. Spank is a monolith of satire on stereotypical nerd fan service. Two to four players each command a crew of swashbuckling Amazon ninja cat girls on an interplanetary quest for booty. This kind, not this kind. As you take your crew on adventures, they'll find toys, amass wealth, and of course hire harems of pool boys until they can retire in luxury. That is, as long as the competing crews don't get to the treasure first. You'll be playing with three decks of cards, toy cards, crew cards, and challenge cards. You'll also have loot tokens, 2d6, and crew tokens. Set up by shuffling the three decks and giving each player four crew cards and one toy. Each player also gets two loot, then pick a color and take your two crew tokens. A note about the crew cards. Each cat girl has varying talents, as indicated by the numbers above her picture. Each number corresponds to a different set of skills. You have Space Pirate, Amazon, Ninja, and cat girl. These numbers are the primary factors that determine your crew's success in completing the challenges ahead of them, so make sure to take careful note of their strengths and weaknesses. Toy cards represent toys that your cat girls find on their adventures that modify their skill numbers up or down. A toy may be assigned to any cat girl at any time, and you may only ever have two toys unassigned. Each cat girl can only have one toy, except for your captain, who can have two, leaving you with a maximum of seven toys. Place your crew mark on whichever cat girl you'd like to make your captain, and you're ready to play. The game is divided into capers, each of which consists of four challenges. Take four challenge cards and lay them out face down in the center of the table. All of the crews will be rushing to complete the same four challenges, and although you might find some toys and loot on the way, the best way to guarantee that you get paid is to finish those challenges first. Flip the first challenge face up so that everyone can see it, and begin play with the player who has the least amount of loot. On your turn, you will choose and send one of your cat girls to complete the current challenge facing your crew. Declare which cat girl you'd like to make the attempt, and then make a skill check by rolling 2d6. The skill that you're rolling against is on the bottom of your challenge card. In order to pass the skill check, you must roll your skill or less. A roll of 2 always succeeds, and a roll of 12 always fails. If you succeed, you have passed the challenge. Take any of the rewards indicated by the challenge card. It could be toys, loot, neither, or both. Then flip over the next challenge card and put your crew marker on top of it to indicate your crew's progression. You may also immediately attempt that next challenge with the same cat girl. You don't have to, but you can keep going until she fails. If you fail a challenge, your turn ends. Your cat girl is knocked out. Turn her sideways and remove her from play. Any toys that she has may not be used for the rest of the caper. However, the rest of your crew learns from that cat girl's disgraceful, disgraceful failure, and they receive a cumulative plus two bonus on their challenge skill for that particular challenge for each cat girl in your crew that has failed that challenge. Hey! However, even if you failed your roll, you might still be able to save the day. There are a couple things you can do to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. If one of your unassigned toys would give that cat girl enough of bonus to have succeeded on her roll, you can give it to her and let her move on. Also, if she already had a toy that gave a bonus to the failed skill, she can use it one more time, which breaks it but also allows her to have a free reroll using that toy's bonus one last time. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to break the pool boys. And finally, your captain gets one free reroll per caper. Because if your captain fails and is knocked out, the rest of your cat girls get minus one on all of their rolls for the rest of the caper. Players take turns until someone beats the fourth challenge, at which point all the other crews get one last chance to make it through. The crew with the first cat girl across the finish line is awarded two loot and one toy, and each other crew that finishes the caper gets one loot and one toy. The game is over when any player ends a caper with ten or more loot. Toys do not count for this victory condition except for pool boys, which count as one loot each. If, at the end of the caper, no player has 10 loot, play another caper, and the adventure continues. Between capers, you may prepare your crew for their upcoming adventures by buying new toys for two loot each from the bank, trading toys, loot, and or crew members between players, and or making one of the cat girls on your crew who was knocked out last caper 
walk the plank. Discard her and draw a replacement crew member. Then draw four new challenges and set sail for booty. This kind, not that kind. Okay, maybe a little of that kind. Thanks for watching and have fun out there. Team Hypercube, out!